Um, the webinar is structured in three parts, um, and this was also given in the title. It's about some principles, and then looking into uh, concrete performance uh, factors which uh, impact imp uh, efficiency. And uh, finally, we have a concrete case study embedded, which we call practice, which uh, looks from a pragmatic perspective into how we introduced uh, lean development into a company with concrete um, constraints and uh, objectives, and therefore also look a little bit into the change management. Um, very clearly, this is not a um, webinar which presents the theory of uh, lean development. It would also be not um, enough time. There are good books around um, which look in all facets, um, such as um, flow analysis, um, weighting theory, and all these kind of things. I will much more look into the practical part. Um, and you see also that here we have um, lean and agile, the reason being that in practice, um, except that uh, when we work on product strategy topics, mostly lean and agile are connected. And um, a lot of the questions come from people, both practitioners and managers, in the direction um, Assuming that we have now um, some HR process introduced, how does this um, relate to requirements engineering? That would then mean also some lean uh, topics to be considered vice versa. Um, working from a management perspective into um, introducing lean development from a, say, per top-down perspective, evidently a couple of HR principles very nicely fit into that picture, such as, um, for instance, uh, Scrum from a project management perspective. Um, the case studies which I have uh, included here will further highlight uh, these topics. So we have um, a couple of uh, quotes or um, observations summarized here, and um, what we see from different industries in which we are active, that's automotive, that's um, ICT, that's uh, automation, that's medical, that's aerospace and transport, um, we see on the one side uh, that uh, there's a lot of topics which are introduced in order to uh, improve performance. On the one side, um, we clearly see that um, still many projects uh, don't hit their targets, both in terms of schedule and budget. On the other side, we also know about a lot of uh, good practices, be it uh, the SEI-driven CMMI, be it um, the already mentioned HR principles, etc., cetera, um, which means that uh, clearly there is a certain methodology around. On the other side, it's not always <coughs> so obvious what to select, how to select, and how to blend these different topics. So one aspect which I want to underline in this webinar is also that um, often it's an intelligent mix of uh, different methods to be used rather than uh, strictly saying let's introduce um, all uh, five uh, lean principles, for instance, or um, a certain methodology. Clearly, we find best practices in a um, capability maturity model integration, the CMMI. On the other side, many companies still feel insecure how to introduce, what speed to introduce, and often it gets very formal, which is not the original idea, but uh, which is something to consider. If done well, then clearly there is a certain room to get improvements. Uh, so for instance, the one which we have um, in the lower right corner of development uh, time being reduced. I mean, these are topics um, which fit very nicely into the topic of uh, lean and um, the examples which I want to further highlight. Um, let me uh, very briefly go into some of the typical um, background topics just to make sure that we're on the same sheet. Um, and I will start with agile development because it's the one which is uh, still most popular. And um, it's a collection of uh, software engineering best practices with a focus on flexibility, reducing overhead, and uh, improving uh, trust uh, and people. So the major theme which HL brought really around compared to the topics out of the 80s and 90s are that uh, much more than ever before, uh, people have uh, uh, gotten in the foreground, um, while other technical principles, such as a continuous build or incremental development, etc., 
Um, they've been around uh, many years earlier, and this is why I say it's a collection of best practices. It means flexibility and therefore also an adjustment to the increasing uncertainty which we have um, all around. The risks are known. We have on the one side failure <coughs> for larger distributed organization, which is not a mandatory uh, problem. I mean, obviously, uh, HR development works very nicely in distributed organization if uh, applied correctly. But um, it's just a risk to consider if people are not at the same place. And also, we should be clear that, uh, as I said earlier, all these collection of best practices have their um, risks at the mo moment where some of these practices are simply not applicable, such as a customer and a project is not always desired. Uh, we have sometimes uh, clients um, whose own clients, uh, so from a perspective of um, who hired them, they would simply say, well, we want to make money. We don't really care to be present in requirements workshops. So what we want to do then with our clients who are faced in such situation is that um, we install proxies uh, to help with such requirements workshops. And this is a very key topic to consider when we see the principles of, uh, say, HR development. Um, they are pragmatic, they are useful, they can be applied, but um, not always literally, as some people might um, imagine when they um, read a book or uh, simply look to an article. Um, there's a set of uh, principles. Uh, you are all aware that um, the HR manifesto now has, has its uh, um, anniversary, and um, clearly these uh, different um, principles mean a lot, be it now uh, that always looking into the value, which is also a lean principle, to build um, collaborative teams to make sure that teams take decisions um, to establish a lot of um, guiding principles and practices rather than um, the old-fashioned um, quality handbook. Um, these have been very good practices which we learned out of um, agile development. Um, an example which is very popular these days is Scrum, and uh, the nice thing with Scrum is that it's not only uh, something which relates to projects um, from different perspectives, not only software projects, also projects in the systems engineering domain, um, projects which um, are in safety critical uh, domains such as medical, aerospace, or transport. And also Scrum is excellent in relating product management um, with engineering and development and um, the picture which we have here um, indicates the famous uh, different iteration cycles, again, not necessarily uh, fixed to a duration of, um, say, two weeks or four weeks, although this is a good practice. Um, the daily scrum is an excellent practice, um, which I can really recommend to anyone who faces difficult project situations, even if a couple of other topics would not be applicable. Lean development uh, goes um, one step further into understanding value and really delivering what has most relevance. And this is where it very nicely relates to agile development. Um, the major difference would be that uh, lean development has uh, started out of management principles, um, such as Toyota production system, etc., and then uh, went um, top-down into the engineering. So lean development came after lean management, both focus on rework reduction, on efficient uh, workflows, etc. Agile has been created more from a bottom-up perspective, and this is the nice analogy why um, we typically bring these two principles together, if at all feasible. Um, the five lean principles, which are often uh, quoted, is um, started in the right upper corner that we have um, creating value for the customer, then 